So build a moat. Uh, I know I'm going to get a lot of, of flack for this. Um, and that's the title for today's training, building a moat around your techs. So what I don't mean is I don't mean putting them in jail. Uh, I don't mean locking them up. Um, what I do mean is giving them everything that they need uh, so that they don't need to, so they don't get lured away by shiny objects and other shops that are trying to um, trying to offer them something to lure them away. And then they really have no intention on fulfilling on those promises. So where this comes from is uh, in a past life, I was in the financial services industry. And uh, when I was a financial advisor, what we used to do is we used to go and prospect CPAs. So a certified public accountant, they had clients that we wanted to also have as clients. So most CPAs, they don't offer financial um, uh, services such as investments, insurance, that type of thing. So what we would try to do is partner with these CPAs. And uh, when we partnered with them, we would offer the investment management piece and the insurance piece and the CPAs would offer the tax advice and, and the other uh, types of advice around those uh, those areas. So one of my mentors taught me, he said, when you're talking with the CPA, because you can't give them financial incentives, you can't say, hey, we'll give you a referral fee if you send, it your, send us your clients. But he said, what you do is you tell them, hey, we're going to build a moat around your clients. And what that means is we know because you've got successful business owner clients, we know that those successful business owners are going to have insurance needs. We know they're also going to have investment needs. And we can help you. We'll partner with you and we'll be friendly. What's going to happen if you don't partner with us is they're going to get those investment needs uh, uh, satisfied somewhere else. And guess what? That other investment guy is probably going to have CPAs that he works with. So they're going to end up poaching your clients because you haven't you don't have an existing relationship with those other investment people. So why don't we come in? We can partner together. We can make sure that your clients are happy and they have everything that they need. And that way, your clients won't get poached by someone else that brings in another CPA. So that was a strategy that worked very well. And I want to share kind of a similar strategy here for protecting your technicians and making sure that you're giving everything that uh, that they need so that they're not going to be lured away. So what are the frustrations? Well, the frustrations are, one, having other shops poach your techs. I mean, that's the biggest frustration there. It's pretty obvious. The other thing is poor morale. So if you have uh, employees that are unhappy, you know how that goes. If, if you know, one bad apple spoils the whole bunch. If you get somebody that has a bad attitude, uh, someone that, uh, you know, is disgruntled, then it really, it poisons the entire team. So this strategy will help you to avoid that. So here's what you'll get by applying the tactics. One, greater employee retention, happy employees stay. Two, happy employees. Three, positive word of mouth about your shop and for a stronger brand. One of the things that you always want to uh, strive for is um, really having positive word of mouth. So positive word of mouth is, um, you know, we work with some shops that have such a great reputation that they have a waiting list of people who want to come and work for them. And that's really where you want to be eventually. You want to have that, that uh, to be in that position where when you do need help, all you have to do is pick up a list of people to call. You start calling them and you can get those positions filled pretty quickly. The only way that you can really get that done is, is by having positive word of mouth, having people talk about you out in the community. So I had a great conversation. Uh, it was a chat with a technician the other day. I was on the Automotive Diagnostic Podcast and uh, a bunch of technicians started reaching out to me after I was uh, on that podcast. And one of these guys was um, uh, a pretty sharp kid. He um, was offered an, uh, uh, you know, something, an incentive to leave his existing shop. So this rival shop reached out. They offered him an $18,000 raise and the personal use vehicle that he was going to get to keep after four years. And it would be his. And so ultimately, you know, he was kind of going back and forth. He reached out to me for a little bit of help in making the decision. And uh, ultimately, he decided to stay. His current shop matched the competing offer. And, uh, you know, he, he decided that it was a better opportunity for him to stay there because he could get better training. And uh, it just made more sense than making a move. But he said something that was really interesting to me. And what he said was, I know you need to chase an increase sometimes, not just expect it. And let that think in, sink in a little bit. 
I know you need to chase an increase sometimes, not just expect it. So let me ask you a question. Are any of your techs chasing an increase right now? And how do you know? So let's take that a step further. This is a, uh, a research study that was done. It's based on 13,000, just over 13,000 uh, employees. And this is all over the world. These are employees. And the topic of the whole research study was why people are quitting their jobs. So if you want to think about if you want to think about why people are quitting their jobs, this is a great one-page chart, and you can Google this to find it. But I just want to go down each one of these items individually and just think about it. Are any of these things applying to your shop? So number one is lack of career development or advancement. That's the number one thing. There just was no place for people to go. So how can you, um, how can you mitigate that particular um, uh, potential negative factor in your shop? Well, career development is, are you growing? Are you adding additional locations? Is there an opportunity for a technician to move into a position of leadership, team leader, uh, lead tech? Is there an opportunity for them to move into management? Isn't there an opportunity for them to become shop foreman? Um, whatever it is, is there a path to growth? Is there a path to development and advancement? That's really important. The next one is inadequate compensation. We're going to talk about compensation. Compensation is always a big one. It's the elephant in the room, and we always get down to compensation. Um, compensation isn't always the number one issue. There are other issues. Uh, one of them is cultural fit, um, making sure that they're part of a, uh, you know, a family environment or a team environment where they feel like they're respected. That's very important. But compensation always comes up there. It's if you're not matching, if you're not at least getting close on compensation, then everything is going to go you know out the window. So compensation is very important. Next one is uncaring, uninspiring leaders. Boy, if I could, you know, if I had a dollar for every time I've heard that one. So a big thing that we talk about all the time at Technician Find is we talk about selling the dream. So selling the dream. And I get lots of pushback from technicians. It's like, oh, what are you telling these guys to, you know, tell us a lie? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. When I'm talking about selling the dream, I'm talking about inviting technicians into a story where they're the hero and you're the guy. Now, that's something that um, it, it's, it's a mindset that I actually got from Donald Miller. He does a great job with this in his book, Building a Story Brand. And the idea here is that the technician is the hero. And if you can tell a story where if a technician comes to work for you, then what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that their life works inside and outside of the shop. You have development programs that are professional development programs, personal development programs that you're really, um, you're leading them to lead a better life and you want their life to work inside and outside of the shop. And you're a good leader in terms of um, providing direction. Um, that's really important and that's going to help you tremendously. And we write that right into our ads. Our ads are really designed so that we are painting a picture where it makes sense for them to consider a move because there's going to be so many benefits on the other side of this move. Because, you know, let's face it, picking up your toolbox and moving, I mean, it's, there's a lot of uncertainty. It's a hassle. You know, you don't, you don't necessarily want to do it unless there is, um, you know, there's a brighter future on the other side of this. So the other uh, aspect of an inspiring leaders is, and I hear this all the time for technicians, that um, their boss doesn't know what they do. <laughs> Working for an incompetent boss always comes up on one of the top 10 things that technicians hate the most. Um, having a boss tell them think what to do and the boss doesn't know what's going on or not being able to ask someone questions when they do have questions or be able to bounce ideas off of smart techs. That's another thing that's very important. So you want, really want to make sure that you have somebody in place that is uh, that can be that anchor, that can be that uh, that inspiring leader. The next thing is lack of meaningful work. What does that mean? Well, when we look at meaningful work, a big part of what we talk about at, at Technician Find is we say, um, if someone joins your shop, and this is actually one of the questions we ask in an onboarding uh, call with our clients, our new clients, is we ask, um, can technicians be part of something meaningful? 
it, are you do you um, are you involved in the community? Are you doing things for the community? Is um, is this is this when employees come to work for you? Are they coming to work for something special? Are you building something special? I mean, what is the deeper meaning and the purpose behind what you're doing and what you're building in your business? And if you can communicate that effectively, it's almost like magic. If you can communicate that effectively, because everybody wants to be part of something special, particularly the younger generations. I'm, you know, I'm part of the Gen X generation and, and my generation was, you know, just you know, get her done, you know, just go out there and just do it, you know. And, uh, you know, we didn't need a lot of coddling and a lot of handholding. It, it's just, hey, this is your job. Go do it. Um, and, you know, when you say why, you say, well, because you get a check. <laughs> but that's my generation. Um, younger generations aren't the same way. They're different. They get motivated by different things. And part of the younger generations, you know, uh, you know, Gen Y, Gen Z, uh, the millennials, they, what they really, they've been, there have been lots and lots of polls on what really motivates these generations. And what motivates them is being part of something special, being part of something that's bigger than they are. So what I found that works very well with, uh, with shops is just getting involved with the community, doing things like Habitat for Humanity, um, being uh, part of uh, organizations like Breaks for Breasts, uh, doing things that are, you know, community toy drives, things like that. Being part of the community and being uh, having deep roots inside of the community and building something that is, is meaningful. That's really important. And if you can communicate that, in your ads, and if you can communicate that in the process of selling the dream of of how a technician's life is going to be better if they make that switch, uh, again, it, it's like magic. It's it's magical. It it really makes a big difference. So the next thing is unreliable or unsupportive colleagues. Having in having a strong team, having a wrong strong team environment, having people that have your back. That's something that we mention in almost every ad that we write. Is hey, we've got a team that's got your back. Um, we listen to your feedback. We take your feedback into consideration. Decision makers are on site. All those types of things really lead into that idea that you've got, uh, you've got support. You're not out there on an island by yourself. The next one is lack of workplace flexibility. We talk a lot about flexibility as well. Flexibility, you know, when I mention this to shop owners, a lot of times they'll say, well, wait a minute, you know, I can't just have people showing up when they want to show up. And I said, well, it's not like that at all. What we're talking about in terms of flexibility is there are a bunch of different levels of flexibility. One level of flexibility says, hey, look, if you schedule time, you can take time off. If you need to, you know, to go to a doctor's appointment, if you need to um, you know, check out a, a kid's ball game, a soccer game, a baseball game, what have you, you, can, you have time. You have that flexibility that you can take advantage of that. Another thing about flexibility is are there options like four 10 hour days or um, you know, no weekends or five day work weeks? I mean, what are the options where you can be flexible? And the important thing about flexibility in terms of what we're talking about is it's flexibility and making sure that your employee's life works inside and outside of the shop. So it's flexibility of making sure that they have time with their family. And, um, and, and quite frankly, when they feel taken care of in that way, they're free to do their best work when they are in the shop. And then the last one is lack of support for health and well-being. This is a big one, um, particularly after uh, you know what we've been through over the past few years. Um, you know, there's anxiety out there. Um, there are situations where people would like to uh, have conversations um, with respect to mental health. I mean, whatever types of situations. So what we see in some of the top shops that we work with is they have structures set in place. They sit down one-on-one. -on -one. They work with their employees' goals, personal and professional goals, and they help keep them accountable towards their personal and professional goals. And they help them build a life outside of the shop that really works for them. And that can mean having um, options for mental health, um, you know, uh, phone numbers through their, their um, through your, um, uh, your employer assistance programs. Uh, it can be things like offering Dave, Dave Ramsey for on the financial side to make sure that they have a proper budget and they're getting their financial needs taken care of. Um, it can be things like personal development. And, uh, you know, we work with shops that um, they listen to books together on Audible. Uh, there are all types of things that you can do in terms of, of personal development and uh, making sure that they uh, are adequate, adequately supported 
in those areas too. And, and quite frankly, if you show things like that on social media, that can be a passive recruiting strategy as well. Because when people see often enough all the cool things that you're doing with your employees and for your employees, then word of mouth travels because it, that's pretty special. Not every business does that. Not every business is caring about their employees to that level that they would actually uh, embark on a, a project like that. So when you do that, it sets you apart. And again, even if you aren't actively searching for employees, if you have that passive recruiting type strategy out there where you're showing things on social media about what a unique environment that you're creating for your employees, then when you do have that need, it becomes a lot easier to get people to apply, good quality people to apply for those positions. So these are the reasons why people are quitting. So if you can address these issues in advance and stay out in front of these issues, then you're going to be better off all around and it's going to help in retention. So what I want to do now is I'm going to pop out. I want to do a, uh, a demo of Indeed and show you some things here because a big question that I get a lot of times when I'll get on an onboarding call with a client is I'll say, they'll say, you know what, I, I don't, what should I be offering? And, you know, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, a salary or in terms of compensation. And what I'll say is, you know what, here's the deal. The deal is you've got to be competitive. And you've got to be competitive based upon the position that you're offering. And the easiest and fastest way, this is just the quick and dirty way to do it, is just go on Indeed. Take a look at Indeed. And there's two different places on Indeed that you want to look. One of the places is you start with Indeed with their Hiring Insights report. So this is Indeed Hiring Insights. If you go log into your employer version of Indeed, you go to Analytics and then you go to Hiring Insights, you can type into Hiring Insights whatever the position is. So right here, we're talking about automotive technician. And then I just picked Colorado Springs, Colorado as an example. And then you generate the report. And this will show you a report of all of the active ads. It shows you statistics about um, how many resumes are in the area within a 25-mile radius of that location. It shows you what's going on. Um, I've done other videos where we walk through step by step and field by field on this particular report. So I'm not going to get into all the all the nitty gritty on that. You can check out the other videos for that. But one of the things I am going to focus on here is I want to focus on the average salary. So average salary is going to give you just a, a, a thumbnail sketch of what jobs that are posted on Indeed where they fall in terms of the categories. And it's not always 100% accurate, and I'm gonna show you what I mean here in a second, but it gives you just a quick thumbnail overview of what you're looking at. So if we're looking at automotive technicians in Colorado Springs, Colorado, the average salary um, is gonna be $67,326 per year. So it says it's 12% above national average, and then it gives you a max. And I'm going to show you this max doesn't line up with the uh, actual page. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. But it gives you kind of an idea. So if somebody comes to me and says, hey, look, we're, we're looking for a master tech, you know, somebody with, um, you know, somebody that can just come in and go to work. We're not going to have to, you know, train them on diagnostics, anything like that. And they and then they say to me, yeah, we want to we want to offer a salary of sixty seven thousand. Well, I'll say, well, guess what? <laughs> That's not going to match up. Um, you're not going to get uh, nearly as many applications as you want, and you're not going to get the top techs applying because you're you're not in the ballpark in terms of salary. So the other thing that we look at is we just look right at Indeed. So why Indeed? Is there any magic about Indeed? Well, the the reality about Indeed is that this is the largest resume database in the world. It's the largest um, job site in the world. So they have the most resumes here. And uh, it, from a, uh, a purely statistical standpoint and, and data standpoint, um, it's just a good place to go because they have a lot of data. So if you're just doing a quick and dirty um, survey, then just go out to Indeed, type in automotive technician, and then your city, and look at what comes up. Because I'll guarantee you, this is what techs are doing. This is exactly what they're going to do. They're going to go out here. They're going to look and they're going to say, hey, what are they offering? 
you know, and you get a, a feel. So here's one 60 to 100 grand. Look at who's offering it. That looks like a dealer. You can go down. Breaks Plus is offering $35 an hour. That's a different level. Here's one, Arch Retail. And we've got Car Guys. They're going up to $145,000 a year. So you can see that doesn't match up with what we just saw over here, max 109,600. That's why it's important to look at both of these. And you can see, okay, here's $21 an hour, but that's at Jiffy Lube. So that's that's a different type. You know, that's a you know, Lube Tech or a Courtesy Tech at a Jiffy Lube. Here we go. Here's Auto Nation Dodge Ram. So they are, that's a dealer, of course. And they're offering $8,899 a month. So you can see that's just over 100K. So you get a feel for what's being offered by the dealers. You get a feel about what's what's being offered by your competitive independent shops. They're offering 120. So, and, and then these folks are offering 100. So you can see. So if someone came to me and said, hey, you know what, we need to get somebody that's really good, I'd say, well, you know what, I mean, at least, even to get in the ballpark, you want to have a range that includes 120. So that's what you're looking at if you want to get in the ballpark of top talent in this area and to get their attention. So that's the way that I would look at it. Another way that I look at it is I'd say, hey, you know what, if you really don't know where to begin, what's your top tech making? Um, and then we'd go from there. We'd use that as a range and we use the, the top, that would be a top range. And the most important thing is, is of course, we never lie about this. It's, you know, it, it doesn't make any sense because if you lure somebody over and you lied, then, you know, now you've got that unhappy, uh, employee, um, and you know, they're going to be looking to jump ship again. I mean, it just, it, nobody wins in a situation like that. So if you can realistically have a conversation and show them through, you know, production and efficiency, how they can get to the number that they want to get to, then you can advertise that number and you can show them and feel confident that you can advertise that number. And then when I'm asked, what's the lower end? Well, the lower end is what will it take for them to stay? You know, if they go below a certain level of production, you know, basically they can't be there because, you know, there's no space for them. It's just, you know, they're, they're more expensive than, you know, their bay and, and their lift uh, is, is, you know, in, in the cost of having them be there, you know, your overhead. So that's typically what we look at is the lower range of the, um, of the overall salary. And we don't want to put a range that's too big. Um, you know, sometimes there's ranges that are just huge, you know, 50 to 120K. You know, I think that's, in my personal opinion, my professional opinion, that's just too big of a range. Because when you look at that, you're thinking, you know, what's the deal? Okay, so they're adver advertising Rockstar Automotive Technician Mechanic. So they want a Rockstar Automotive Technician Mechanic and the bottom end of the range is 50 grand. So they want to pay 50 grand for a, a rock star mechanic. Well, the range is just too big. I mean, you're not going to hire a rock star and pay them 50 grand, you know, and then, you know, and then what's the, di what's the difference between the two? So it just sets off this, this cognitive dissonance in, in your mind. And, and if tech will look at that and go, wait a minute, this is BS. You know what? They've got this huge range and, and they want a rock star. It just doesn't make sense. So I would tighten up that range. I mean, I, I would say, you know, look, if 120 is on the on the top end of the range, you know, what's on the bottom end? You know, if you hire somebody that you consider to be, you know, pretty decent, is it going to be 100 to 120? Is it going to be 90 to 120? I mean, those are more realistic, more realistic ranges. So um, that's what uh, what I see when we're talking about uh, about compensation. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. But it has to be, one, it has to be realistic, two, it has to be eye-catching, and uh, in three, you have to feel comfortable having that conversation. So when you're sitting down across your desk for, with a tech and you know they bring up comp compensation or you bring up compensation, you need to be able to walk them through how you do it. You need to be able to say, hey, look, if you can you know, flag this many hours a week, then you know, you're going to get to this number. Or if you can say, 
hey, we've got a tech that's already doing this. You know, if you want to bring them in, say, hey, come on in here, tell them, you know, what'd you make last week? I've seen shops do that too. They say, hey, we can tell you how to make this. And we have techs that are making this, this money. Let me, you know, let me connect you with one of them and talk to him for a little bit and, and let him tell you uh, the story. So that's in, as much detail as I really want to get in. We can go it a little bit deeper if you want to in the Q&A, but that's the the main gist of what I wanted to show you in terms of just getting a quick and dirty feel about what salaries are doing out there. These are some numbers for Indeed. I know that right now what's going on, um, and by the way, if you're trying to ask a question, you might need to take yourself off of mute. And um, these are some numbers for Indeed. It is notoriously difficult to get hold of any human beings at Indeed. These are some numbers that we've found and that my team uses when we need to talk to somebody at Indeed. Um, again, I've done a whole training on Indeed and how to work with Indeed. You can find that in the Technician Find community. And um, the big thing that they're doing right now with Indeed is they're trying to push everybody towards pay per application. I, I don't think that that works for anyone. I never recommend that you pay per application because uh, Indeed just, uh, I like to say they lick their chops when you sign up for that particular um, option. And they'll just send you every type of resume that they can possibly throw at you and then just hope that you don't go and flag it and get your money back for it. Um, in terms of Indeed, what you really want to do is you want to use Indeed for, um, for outreach because Indeed as a platform, there's just so much competition on Indeed. And in your local area, you're going to get just hammered by the dealers on Indeed because they're throwing thousands of dollars a month at Indeed. And you're fighting over a very small percentage of technicians who are actually out there actively looking on a regular basis. So if you're going to use Indeed, you definitely want to get the, um, um, if you must, do the minimum sponsorship that you possibly can. And then you want to have access to the resume subscription because you want to go in and be actively inviting um, those technicians who aren't, or aren't looking. You want to be getting in front of them with a good offer. And, and that's what we do, quite frankly. We uh, are actively out there looking for technicians and uh, sending them very enticing offers and inviting them to apply for the positions. And uh, if you're not already part of the Technician Find community, definitely um, check out the Technician Find community. Send us an email at service at technicianfind.com. We'll send you information. And what you can do is uh, we're going to post all of the replays of um, all of the office hours. We'll be in the community as well as the trainings. We're gonna separate out the trainings individually so that you can uh, jump in there and, and uh, get access to them, these bite-sized trainings. So thank you so much for being here today and we'll see you in the community.